Okay, this is Todd Anderson here with a little video screen capture of a PowerPoint presentation I put together on how to build a model rocket. And this is going to be sort of a basic introduction to model rocketry and putting together a model rocket with some additional resources placed at the end of this for those interested in, in going on to learn more or different techniques. First, let's talk about the materials that we're going to use and what we're going to need to accomplish this. We're pretty much going to be building the, this model rocket from a kit supplied by a company called Pitsco that makes wonderful model rocketry kits and sells engines and anything that you need associated with model rocketry. So that's where we're going to get all our parts. As far as um, other materials, some scotch tape will be helpful to have on hand, a glue gun, and a ruler. Maybe some scissors also. But that's about it. First, let's talk about the body tube of the rocket. This is the basic uh, cylinder that makes up the main shape of the rocket. In order to build the body tube, we're going to need some uh, plain printer paper and three strips of adhesive tape. That's the red tape that you see there on the screen. Um, it, it is adhesive. The back side, um, when you get it wet, it activates the adhesive, similar to like a, an envelope or a stamp that you would lick. Okay? And then on the far right-hand side of that adhesive tape, it's kind of hard to see, the body tube mold, which is one inch in diameter. This one we're going to use is a plastic mold that comes with our kit, but you could also use just a one inch dowel rod or anything else that's that general shape. Okay, so here we go with the mold. This is um, the basic shape and size of the body of the model rocket that we want to build. However, this plastic mold is not a permanent part of our rocket. It's just a mold that we're going to try to get the shape of. And it is a approximately 12 inches tall but uh, we're not worried if it's exactly that or not it's just close and that's all we need now first thing we need to do as far as building our body tube is to completely cover and wrap that mold with printer paper we don't want to tape the printer paper to the mold we want to form a, a cylinder where we'll eventually be able to just slide that mold out of and get rid of it um, and be left with our body tube. So we want to cover that mold completely with the printer paper, just regular printer paper and some tape, nothing fancy. We just want to cover it completely. It has to be all the way covered because once we activate the adhesive on the adhesive tape and start applying it here, if it touches the mold, then it will be permanently attached. Well and that will cause problems with us when we go to remove the mold. So This is what you should end up with after completely covering your mold with the printer paper. Next, let's do a little bit of practice as far as how we wrap this adhesive tape to form our body tube. And we're going to do this with no water before wetting the adhesive. Go ahead and put one piece on the on the back side of that body tube like I'm showing in the image and angle it down at a 45 degree angle and then just begin wrapping and it will just kind of roll and wrap diagonally with a slight overlap of about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch all the way down when you finish this is what you should end up with the mold almost all the way completely covered it's overlapped a little bit all the way down. If it's not reaching all the way down, either you didn't cut your adhesive tape long enough, which we cut these at about 18 inches, or your down angle of 45 degrees is less than 45 degrees. And that would cause it also to not reach all the way. So now, having practiced, now we're going to go ahead and wet this adhesive tape. And just run it under some water in a sink. You don't want to run too much water over it. We just want to wet it quickly because you can actually just wash the adhesive off that tape. So just quickly get it uh, wet under a tap. Position it like we did before 
with it behind uh, the top of the mold and then just angle it down at a 45 degree angle and start wrapping. As you can see in the picture, I keep my hand kind of on the back side there and just smooth out that adhesive tape because when it's wet, it's going to want to curl and twist a little bit and it's a little bit harder to manage when it's wet than when it's dry. But just smooth it out all the way down and you're going to want to put three layers of that adhesive tape on. Once you're done putting those three layers on, this is what it's going to look like roughly. Keep the mold inside. That mold has to stay there while this whole thing dries and uh, wait till it's all the way dry before we try to remove it. Okay, let's move into our next sub-assembly, which is our fins. And go ahead and divide up a fin or the, the fin material that comes in the kit into three equal pieces and I went ahead and drew 45 degree angles on the ends of those pieces we're not going to go into a lot of detail about fin design because there's lots of different ways you could design your fins uh, this is sort of an easy way that works well uh, that makes good use of the material that we have so once you have that marked out Go ahead and cut it out, and you should end up with three pieces or three fins that are all identical and look like this. Next, let's move into our assembly. This is the parachute template that comes in the Pitsco model rocket kit. Go ahead and pull that out, lay it out on your table in front of you. And notice, uh, you're going to need a pair of scissors here. Notice that it is a hexagon shape and there is a dotted line that goes around the outside. All you want to do is cut out that parachute around the dotted line, which will end up leaving this. Next, you want to locate the thread or the string that came with the Pitsco kit. Make sure that you have that out and available. We want to cut six strings that are approximately 12 inches long and go ahead and lay one out by each of your six corners. Before taping the string onto those corners, we want to put in a little reinforcement that's going to help it so that if that string gets yanked on, or when that string gets yanked on, it's not just going to pull off of the parachute. So notice how I've kind of put a little hook or a loop in the end of that string as I've applied the tape to it. That's going to re uh, provide the reinforcement that we need and keep it from just pulling off. Then you can just tape that down onto each of the six corners of your parachute. You want to locate the eyelet or eye screw that came with your kit and have that handy and available for the next part of our parachute assembly which is attaching and getting all the shroud lines attached together. So you, you want to thread each of your six shroud lines through that eye screw and kind of fold it back over on itself. Gather them all together, thread them through, fold them out over on itself. Okay, with, with the eye screw just sitting in the middle like you see there in the image. Once you have those all gathered together, we want to take just a strip of tape and wrap it tightly around the ends of the shroud lines just below the eyelet. Keep that all secure. Then we can attach it to the nose cone. That eye screw just screws into the bottom of the nose cone. So go ahead and put that all together and um, we're almost done with our parachute assembly. Let's just attach the shock cord now. I want you to cut a shock cord which is a, it's an elastic stretchy string. It's not just regular string. And with one end, you're going to thread it through the eyelid again, fold it over on itself, wrap some tape around like you did with the shroud lines. The other end, just set aside for now while we uh, finish tidying up our body tube, which we've left drying for a day 